Backstage with Robert Emery. Hello and welcome to episode number six of Backstage with me, Robert Emery. Today we go back to the long form interview and I'm so thrilled to be able to say that we've got the star of the musical theatre world, Villamine Fakaik. Uh, Villamine and I have known each other for a while now and she is an incredible, formidable actress who has been a leading role in the West End, on Broadway and all over Europe. It's an exciting interview and if you're interested at all at what goes on behind the scenes uh, in the world of theatre, then uh, this interview is really for you. So please sit back, enjoy and here we go. Here's Villamine for Kike. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, we work together, just so everybody's clear on this, we worked together uh, in Germany recently doing Bad Out of Hell. Yes. And you have just finished doing that. I have. And you played the part of Sloan there. Yes. Um, and it was a, an interesting time because it was the first... Um, it was the first production which Bad Out of Hell had turned into a different language. So it was quite challenging, certainly from my point of view, um, doing uh, the well-known Jim Steinman Meatloaf songs in German. Yes. Um, it was a bit of a, a shocker, I think, to the system <laughs> for, for everyone. Um, and, you know, you're, you're, you're actually not German anyway, um, although you're fluent. So I mean, did you find that difficult, you know, jumping straight in there, doing uh, 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 essentially uh, well-known songs in uh, from English into German? Yeah, yeah, it definitely was... was well, difficult is a bit too too much, but um, it was a challenge because, of course, I've I've known the songs in English and uh, they're iconic, and um, you know the the melody and the lyrics are always like written together, so it just fits perfectly. It makes sense. Um, so uh, making that my own in a in German was, of course, a bit a bit of a challenge but um you know i'm up for a challenge so we did that a lot in the rehearsal period and uh yeah i mean now um you know it's just it's just second nature hmm. I, i'd like to take you back all right to when you were 12. Ah. <laughs> um now i think this is when you found that you had a talent for singing. Yes. And before that, I, I guess you must have sung in the bath or just sort of doodled around and... Do you... I did, yeah, yeah, of course. I was always singing because my and my dad always sung. He was more in the classical uh, field. Um, so, yeah, but we sang in school and then all of a sudden I got a solo um, just in the classroom, just singing, and then all of a sudden everyone was like oh that sounds good and I was like oh does it and then I started to notice that it's actually yeah maybe it was a talent I don't know you know it was just something that I never really thought of I just liked singing I played the the flute actually because I always wanted to 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 play music to you know I was very much um you know, always busy with music. It was always around us. So um, it was not that singing was my my thing. But when I was 12, yeah, when I got that solo line, all of a sudden I noticed, oh gosh, this is actually really great. This is actually something I, I may be good at. So that's when, when that started. And um, what happened at that point? Did you go back home and said, hey, I need lessons, I, I, I want to learn how to sing properly, or did you just sort of see what happened naturally? Or Yeah, I think maybe not at 12, but I think um, when I went to a, a different school, because in Holland we, we go from 6 to 12, and then from 13 to 18 to another school. And I think when I was 13, 14, I, I said to my dad, maybe I want to quit the flute, and start uh, doing singing lessons. So, yeah, and actually he had to ask a colleague of him um, if that was all right, because 13, 14 is very young to start singing lessons. But she said, yeah, come over and we'll just do it. And and that's when that started. And then um, in school I got uh, more confident to, to, um, to say, hey, maybe I can sing at, at the school performance or the school celebration of whatever was celebrated and then um and then all of a sudden i was like the singer of the school 
<laughs> I know that. Well, yeah, I definitely know that feeling of being the pianist at the school. Um, did you, though, have any concept of musical theatre at that age? Not really. Uh, at that time, um, it started to become popular in Holland. I think somewhere in my third or fourth year in, in school, um, Les Miserables was in Holland. That was actually one of the first shows that we had in Holland. And I already thought like, ooh, that's in, that's cool, that's interesting, but it's, it was never really... No, I was more of a pop pop kind of girl. Yeah. So, so, so Lame, just to clarify, Lame Miss was one of the first shows that came over to Holland. I, uh, yeah, Cause maybe, I mean, it's, or the Phantom, Phantom or Lame Miss. Because it, it's, it's really, you know, being Brit, you know, we, we've had musicals, well, for well over a hundred years in, yeah. in the theatre in London, you know, where yeah. there used to be the old music hall, um, and, and it's a very strange, concept for a Brit that somebody who who lives elsewhere hasn't had musical theatre for a hundred years no, as well and yeah. that it's a new thing in, in their country. I mean that's yeah. a really strange thing for me. Yeah. It yeah. I mean um I probably cannot remember everything and the, probably someone will say, Oh no, but there was this yeah, musical yeah. somewhere. But definitely when I was 14, 15 years old, then then Les Mis or the Phantom, one of the two, yeah. was in was in, was yeah in Scheveningen in a bigger theater in Holland, and that's when really things became popular in yeah musical theater land in Holland. Yeah, that's when it started because we didn't even have um, schools or anything. You know, musical theater um, schools. It was all either. Um, acting or dancing or singing, but not the three combined. Mm. Fascinating. So, you, so after your your um, your school, you then left and you went to a conservatory, I think. And yes, because I was yeah. When I I knew immediately, like okay, singing is is something I wanted to wanted to pursue and I felt good at, and that was just the thing I could do. That was the the talent and. Um, and so after a while, I um, I started to um, look up all kinds of different music um, schools, like what would be good. And then uh, the conservatory Rotterdam, um, uh, yeah, told me I could come. <laughs> okay. So was that classical singing? No, it, pop. Pop. Pop singing. So, um, yeah, they had a classic... Um, side and then they had pop music and then they had jazz and they had um, world music that's what they called it and uh, in the beginning we, I just started to do all of that except for classical and then after a while I noticed that um, pop was my thing and also a little bit of musical theatre because then that started to grow and grow and grow in Holland and looking back at those days now is there anything that you have is there one specific thing that you can think of that you've brought with you to your professional career all these years later that you still remember being taught back then or an experience you had back then which is, is still affecting you today? Well, what I think um, is really has been good for me is is um, the conservatory is very much of an individual, like self-taught kind of thing. You know, it's like you have to just dive into uh, to this world you know I was 18 years old and I was used to if I chewed chewing gum in school then I had to you know wipe, wipe the floor or anything you know so I was just I, I didn't know anything and then all of a sudden I came in to the conservatory and it was all everyone was so confident or at least I thought that you know, and um, and everyone knew exactly what they wanted, and they every everything was just like you study at home, you do all kinds of things, you play in bands, you explore, you you find your talent, and then one lesson a week, um, you just you know learn something in that lesson, and then you take that at home and you know. Uh, explore so that's what, a little bit what it was and uh, and develop of course um, 
So playing in pop bands and and being at the conservatories probably because I so just needed to take care of myself, you know, and um, also not take myself too seriously. And you know, if something if if some someone criticizes you, you take it, but you not immediately you know go hide in a corner. Um, it's it's a tough world, and um, I think that it was a good preparation for me to to be able to do musical theater because musical theater is like the toughest. Mm. And and did, were you when you were at the conservatory? Were you still in rock bands on the side? And and yeah. did you do that when you left the conservatory? Yes, uh, pop and rock bands. I started that when I was I don't know sixteen seventeen. And throughout my whole conservatory, that was like six years. Uh, I did that uh, in two, three different bands, uh, touring all around Holland. So you were uh, gigging a lot. Gigging a lot, and then and then of course also studying. Hmm. And I so think... so do you, do you think looking back at, at that time, do you think that gave you a um, a really healthy start to your career because of? The stamina it needs to to take to be able to tour and gig and and the sort of focus and do you yeah think it... I mean um, yeah both so and stamina vocal vocally um, but also what I what I just said like like you know um, how do you say that in, in English like just just being strong and and um, you know 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 what you can do and um stand your woman that's what we say in holland stand your woman <laughs> stand your ground stand look your after ground. yourself look after believe in yourself, yourself. Yeah. yeah yeah and um um i think that both of them because oh yeah absolutely i mean touring and and being able to perform in rock bands and at that time you know um there was floor monitoring there was no no in-ear monitoring uh people could still smoke in the in the yeah. clubs and stuff so yeah. there were lots of circumstances we also had to deal with so um yeah i think that was um that was a good good base for me to, to go on yeah. so how did you transition into musical theater what what's the story there um yeah i because uh, during conservatory time, also musical theater got more and more popular in Holland. Um, I started to to yeah be more interested in that in that field, and um, I was just curious and just was wanting to explore. A, I don't know a different field in the same in, also in music. So uh, someone said to me, like, is, here's an audition for um, Elisabeth was the was the show in Holland. And um, I just said, well, you know, I there's nothing to lose. So let's just let's just go for it. And then all of a sudden I got hired and I was in an eight show week contract. So it was <laughs> <laughs> totally different. But yeah, really. Cool. And what were you doing in Elisabeth? I had an ensemble part. Yeah, so um, so yeah. I mean, for me that was a great start because I didn't know anything, not a thing about musical theater. So um, so I had to learn from scratch. I mean, I could sing, but pop singing in bands and touring is is something else. So um, so being able to um, yeah to do a show like that for um, um, an audience that is sitting and, and expecting something. Um, I don't know, uh, being being able to do that eight shows a week. Um, yeah, that was, it was really, really cool to to get to, get to know that. Field. Yeah, I mean, the, the eight shows a week thing is, for, for people who are not in musical theatre, th that's probably the one big thing that they don't think about because, of course, if you are a fan of theatre, you tend to go and you see the performance and you forget there may have been another performance earlier on in that day yeah. and another five, you know, the well, days before. Well, there are fans, of course, that will come more often. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, you know, but, we, yeah. we, we had 
some bat fans who were there, I'd say 80, 90 percent of the right? performances. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's quite incredible. But, yeah. but, but the stereotypical audience member turns up to uh, you know a, a piece of theatre, yeah. goes in, watches it. Go, either they, hopefully they enjoy it, and then they leave, and they kind of they're in that bubble. Yeah. And the thing that, from a um, a musical director's point of view, and from somebody who conducts shows, I find the hardest thing is to help keep everybody on form yeah. that they can perform eight shows a week yeah, um, and that they have the stamina to do that, especially when it's a really hard thing like Bad Out of Hell is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sure there are some people who are listening to this podcast who maybe are thinking about getting into the world of musical theatre or they're just beginning. What form of advice would you give anybody to to help them look after their stamina? Yeah, uh, it's a good question because um, I've experienced throughout the years that it's very individual what what drives people to be able to to keep that stamina and keep the discipline. Um, but um, for me, of course, it is first about you know taking care of yourself. So be making sure that. You eat healthy. Um, you, you're in good shape, um, but there. Are, that's why I think it's so difficult to answer this question because I know people who, who I don't know, are rock and roll and and still are able to deliver eight shows a week. So for me personally, I um, I take care of myself. I try. I need my sleep. I need to um, have um, a very good breakfast. I need to. Uh, what do you have for breakfast? I have. Um, I always start my day with uh, two cups of green tea, fruit. Then I need to wait twenty minutes because <laughs> my my stomach has to digest that first. And then I do. I have porridge with water, not with milk. Okay. With water, uh, with blueberries and walnuts. Very specific. Very specific, and I needed to um, definitely find out what works best for me, but that is definitely what works best for me. Well, maybe you just hit the nail on the head, as we say, which is you have to find out what What works for you, you, what your limitations are, where you know you can push things, where you know that you've got to be sensible and And that is definitely, that's that's why I said it's, it's so individual, because people have different limits and, you know, are grew up differently and you know so um, for me it's definitely something that I also needed to find out I definitely need my eight hours of sleep and um, yeah there are things that I I rather not eat before a show because because uh, I don't feel well or I feel bloated or anything mm. so there's all, all kinds of things um, so um yeah, there's there's another thing that I always say, you know, um, first of all, it's a tough job and it's, you know, it looks like it's, it's of course it's fun and, you know, otherwise I wouldn't do it. And of course, you know, you have to be talented and all that kind of stuff. Um, but um, it is, a, it is, yeah, the highest form of sports, you know, and um, you have to just always want to go that little extra centimeter and um i don't know it's it's about believing in yourself and not if 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 there's someone saying hey you know what i don't think you're good enough then that you're hiding in a corner but then you just get up again and and say okay but maybe i can learn something and then i do it again you know so it's 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 all of that combined. Are there any? I mean, self belief and self confidence are two of the biggest stumbling blocks in the creative industry. Yeah. I think by a long way. Um, and I know an awful lot of people who have given up their career, not because they couldn't have a career, but because they felt like they didn't deserve it or they weren't mm. good enough, even though they were. Um, and it's, and it's the, the thing which is, it, it's a real plague in the industry yeah. for a lot of people. Um, now, I mean, I, I'm really lucky that I personally don't 
have that issue with work. It's mm. funny in my private life, I'm quite a shy person, um, and and I'm you know much more insecure with my private life. But with my work life, um, I feel really totally secure and at home. Yeah. Um, I, I suspect you're a little bit the same. The same. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things that also keeps me going and going because I'm. I feel so good on stage. Of course, you know, I always know that I can develop and there's always something that I, you know, when I come off stage, there's always something that I say, Ooh, you know what? I think I could do that better. Uh, and there's, and there's always someone in the audience who says, um, I didn't like it. You know, you're, you're, you're always handling that, but I, uh, I feel so good on that stage, being able to perform, being able to sing, being able to, to entertain people and, 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 you know, um, so that... It's where you feel at home, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's what I felt, uh, when I, when I was 12, you know, like, ooh, th this is something that suits me. This is something that makes me who I am, you know, you're always on, uh, searching, especially in, in that age, 12, 13, 14, like, Ooh, what do I want, what do I want to do? And I was actually so lucky that I found that very quickly. Do you, um, I mean, uh, we, we've both come across and in fact, there's one particular person who springs to mind now, I'm not going to mention the name of it, but, um, <laughs> that, that, you know, has, has trouble with, with self-confidence and, and and that self belief that is so vital. Um, are there any books that you've read which have helped you with this in the past, or or any podcasts you listen to, or or do you follow any spiritual beliefs that help mm. you and give you confidence, or meditation, or? Um, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm really glad I asked that question. <laughs> Um, okay, I mean, there, there are things that, of course, um, I've, I, I have read, um, some, um, like meditation books and, 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 you know, to, to help me like stay, always be realistic and, and see positive, the positive side of things. And like, like, um, to, um, put things in perspective. So that's definitely something that I sometimes had to read or had to hear from someone to, and actually that's always the case, you know, sometimes you're in sort of some sort of a bubble and you just feel like, oh my gosh, this is so important. This is the most important thing in the world. But then, you know, someone has to just say, but you know what, um, you know, you can, you can drink water out of the uh, out of the tap out of the tap and you know there's so so many things that other people in the world can yeah. so what are you worried about and then all of a sudden I'm like oh yeah that's actually true and then and then yeah that's that and then it makes it more easy and um uh, yeah putting things in, in perspective that is that is I think that's definitely helpful for this job yeah so if a uh, uh, a budding I don't know, 18 year old young actress, actor came up to you and said, oh, I need help. I don't believe I can do this. Sorry, that's the clock that's going. The clock. <laughs> uh, ran out of time. Um, then your, what you would try and do is pop that bubble of, of this is the only thing that matters in the world and say, of course it's incredibly important but it's not the only thing that matters in the world and have self-belief, have self-confidence, keep going. Yes, That's I'm nodding. your okay. advice. Well, yeah. I mean, I've done lots, uh, lots of workshops where I've had all kinds of different people in and everyone um, um, is, is different and handling th things differently. But um, um, there, of course, are people there that ask me like, okay, do you think I'm... I'm I have a future here or gosh, I, I, I think I cannot do it. What should I do? Um, whatever, you know, and, and for me, always the main thing is, is that I, I started to make music because it made me happy. And, um, I noticed that I could make people happy with it. 
And that's the, the first thing. So if that already is, is, is not there because you're only struggling, you know, then, then put things in perspective. And why would you struggle for something that, you know, mm. maybe, maybe it's not that important. Mm. Maybe, but yeah. And also, um, I don't know. It's, it's just really, I think in this job, especially it's really good to, to work hard and, you know, go to the limit and even over the, li over the limit and then see what you can do and then learn from that and, and take all these experiences and stuff. So that is really good, but it's such a tough job. And, you know, if it's, yeah, it's not for everyone. No, it's not. Do you ever get nervous? Have you ever been nervous? Yes. Yes? Yes. The smaller the audience, the ner more nervous I am. Okay. Which is... Um, and do you actively do anything to calm those nerves? Or do you just... You're just so experienced now that you I, just... I put things in perspective. Okay. <laughs> that is... That's that's the phrase of the day, isn't it? I can see that's going to happen. I think it's, it's definitely written on my forehead. Yeah. What? Or I try to. It's, sure. It's... So, look, you've got a... Clearly a very good coping mechanism for your job and for, for those downsides, potential downsides of the job. Um, they don't need, to, you know, being nervous is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's, a, it's adrenaline. Mm -hmm. We all need adrenaline to some extent when you go on a stage to be able yeah. to do your job. Um, but offset, how are you? <laughs> how am I doing offset? Yeah. I mean, you know, you, yeah. you've got this, I, again, I, 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 I've got a feeling you're very much, um, we're very much on the same page when it, you can be standing there in front of 20,000 people and it's okay. It yeah. feels okay. It feels like you're home. Um, for me personally, it doesn't particularly bother me if there's 20 or 20,000 people as long as I'm doing my work mm -hmm. and I believe that the, the job I'm doing, I'm doing the best of my ability, yeah. then I'm, I'm a happy, Bunny and I actually I don't get nervous. I never never had that um, that um, that feeling. I, I never had to to deal with it. Oh, well, apart from my wedding day, oh. my wedding day, I was a bag of bones. <laughs> um, but um, because you played there, uh, uh, you did you... no, just just because I was getting oh, married, oh, and I was okay, thinking, right, what is okay. about to happen to my life? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, you know, but but off the stage, off the podium. Um, off the set, I think we are very different people. Yeah. Um, and that confidence isn't necessarily there with me. And what about you? No, now? no, I have, I have the same. It's not that I'm a very insecure, shy person, but, um, there are things that, that I can easily worry about. Um, and not for just a second, but then, you know, have the whole hour like, oh my gosh. I said something in the canteen to that person and maybe she took that the wrong way and how am I going to solve this now? Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. And that plays on your mind and it gets round and round. Yes. Yeah. And what, what uh, the good thing is is that I can go on stage and then be happy. Yes. <laughs> so here's a question for you then. If you've got your coping mechanism for your work and you can pop that bubble when you need to and you can put yourself into that mindset why don't you just apply that yeah. to when you're spending an hour in your dressing room going, oh, I can't believe I said that to somebody. Yeah. What are they going to think of them? Oh, no, what are they going to think? Why yeah. don't you just use the same yeah. technique? I I try to. Try to. I guess it's because it's we're human. Just, and humans uh, yeah. are inherently daft yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it's, it's a very good question. I mean, um, you know, that's why I'm also immediately thinking like, yes, it's easy for me to say, like, put things in perspective and just, you know, um, go on stage and do the best you can. But then in, in yeah, private, um, it's a different story. Mm. So, yeah, that's, I don't know. I don't know why. Um, I try to. I have my husband who I can call and then he says, hey, you know. Because Bart's a musician as well. Yeah. So he's... You know, he understands the industry, understands the the pitfalls of being a performer, oh, yes. being a creative. So Definitely. he's he's got your back on that and your yeah. support. But talking talk about that and relationships, um, 
you know, I've got your CV here, and <laughs> and it's and it's quite astonishing for a start. I mean, it's almost like you don't have a home. It's yeah. <laughs> you know, Germany, London, New York, London, Germany, Holland, New York, Germany, <laughs> Oberhausen, um, Switzerland. Yeah, it yeah, goes on yeah. and on and on. Yeah, home now, is mentioned just once, <laughs> but, but that's that, where my home is, though. Yes, yes. So, how do you um, survive that? How do you keep? Um, how do you keep a relationship going? And how do you keep, you know, home life going when you're away for so much? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, I started uh, working in the international field um, in 2005 and my husband and I were together already back then. So um, he sort of like grew with me into this, in, into this kind of way of living. Um, so that's one thing that's probably already uh, made it easier. Uh, for me, because I also had to had to find out like, oh, is this something I like? Is this something I can do? And then, um, and yeah, it is. It is sometimes very difficult. You know, sometimes I say like three, four weeks tops that I don't, I can, you know, we can be apart, and then we have to find a way to to he comes to me or I come to him or, but sometimes that really is not possible. You know, you're in in a rehearsal process, or you're just too far away, or he has to work um, so many hours, and I have to have to work. So it's just too difficult to find time to travel. Um, I was in Berlin last year, and uh, that was and and Bart was touring, so that uh, was so difficult. We had like a Monday where I um, took the first train, like four thirty in the morning. To be there on the Monday, and then Tuesday morning, I had to uh, come back. Know, come what? back to mm. Berlin. So, um, yeah, sometimes it is very difficult, but um, I don't know. We we just do what we want to do, and it's 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 just always working. Yeah. And we're always very happy to see each other. It's also it's also sometimes we make the joke like, yeah, we. We are together for so long already. It's because we never see each other. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what's the what's the what's the you know the the key to this. I don't know. It's just um, well, I suppose it's whatever makes you you know it it, it work for you. I mean, I, I had a, a similar thing. I remember in twenty eleven, I had a really insane year with work. And I caught, uh, at the end of the year, I calculated how many flights I had caught. And I, it was, on average, one every three days mm. for the whole of 2011. And I remember when my nephew was born, the only way I could see him was um, stopping off at an airport when I was transitioning through close to where they live and hopping out of the airport to see them for about 25 minutes in the mm. airport cafe on the other side before I hop back to the other oh, side of the airport to fly wow. off again. And I remember Crazy. thinking back then, you know, that that for me was like a near nervous breakdown time yeah. because I just, yeah. I found that horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody looks externally at your life and go, oh, you must have to lead the best life. You're such a jet setter. It must be amazing. <laughs> and you go, no, it's the opposite way around. Yeah. It's, it's horrendous. But, you know, at the same time... You, I, you count your blessings because you've got the, the the work and people want you to do it. Yeah. So it's, it's a double edged sword sometimes. It's it it is definitely. Um, I don't know. I also just really like to be able to work in these different environments and always meeting new people and um, you know I love uh, different languages and I'm always um, trying to to to. To develop that and get better and better and um, yeah I don't know now coming back to Oberhausen uh, for you know in German in a, in a new show with new people um, all kinds of nationalities in that cast it's just amazing you mm. know and I love I love that and and being able to do that every year to be 
to be then in Holland and then in Germany. And yeah. I mean, from for for my career, for my um, enjoyment in in the work, and um, it's I don't know, I love it. I love the variety. Yeah, the variety, and yeah. also you know the the different languages to be able to to play a character and sing the songs in that language and making it my own, even though it's not my own language, is such a great challenge, you know, I love it. Mm. So um, that's what um, what makes me just still want to do that. And of course, um, now we, me and my husband, managed to do that and we're very happy and we're, we're you know, good. But we always say, you know, if one of us starts to get very miserable... Of course, you know, then we'll have yeah, to think of something, something else. Something has to change, yeah. So, taking you back again, back in 2004, you moved to Cologne. Yeah, and 2005. 2005, think, yeah. And, and got a part in Rock You. We were Rock You, yeah. And you ended up playing, well, first of all, you understood all three uh, lead roles, Skaramouche, Yeah, Killer well, Queen I started Meek. in the ensemble with yeah. the um, cover uh, Skaramouche and Killer Queen, and then a year later, I was a walk-in cover for all three leads, and then I became Killer became Queen. Killer Queen. Yeah. yeah, so that was a really cool journey. And of course, Sharon D. Clark um, played that originally, yeah. and she is in the press all over the place today, Yeah, here, because of her success with um, the thing that she was in called Caroline or Change. Uh, yes, I, I, yes, absolutely. And, uh, and I saw that awesome. on the Olivier's, which was broadcast last night on ITV, and uh, astonishing performer. So you did that in Cologne. Um, yeah. And you were not there for that long because then something happened which really did change your life quite considerably. Uh, yeah, well, I was there actually for three years. So oh, I really? Think that's really long. <laughs> From My research is wrong. <laughs> Almost three years, yeah, on really? and off. Yeah, I, okay. I left um, 2007 because then the Green Witch came uh, came to. Uh, she came to knocking at your door. She came knocking at my door. So what was yeah. what was the audition process like? Quickly for for Wicked. Was, um, it, was it tense? I it mean, was, and you have lots oh of yeah, it, this was a role that everyone wanted to play. Mm -hmm. Everyone had seen the show either in uh, New York or in London. Um, you know, I don't know. This is uh, it's still it's still this show that everyone wants to be in. And um, and if you're able to hit those notes as Alphaba, and uh, you know, then 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 yeah, you just want that part. So that was exactly for me. It was the same. So, um, so when that audition um, call came, um, you know, thousands of people, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, you just go round by round by round because no one... Do you remember knows. how many rounds? I think we had five. Wow. Yeah. I think we had, yeah, I think I had one time that I had to come in for, like, it was sort of a final and then... Then they called me when I was on the train station, like, can you come back tomorrow? So it was right before I got on the train. Oh. So, yeah, that was, so I think five in total, maybe even six. Yeah. And and do you remember if they already had found the Glinda and were you auditioning opposite? Uh, no, no, no. It was all with a, um, someone who read for us. Yeah, yeah. fine. Okay. And then you got the phone call, or you were... Well, actually, what did happen? Were you, was it over the phone? Your agent was told? You uh, No, in, in Germany, most of the time, we we are uh, communicating ourselves with the casting people. Um, and, um, yeah, I think a few days later, I just got a call from the company manager of, uh, of the theatre that uh, they uh, wanted to offer me the job. And I was like, what? First cast? What? Yeah. It was amazing. It was really, I mean, I, I remember that I was just jumping up in the air and, and just got so emotional because for me, you know, that was definitely, I don't know, I was, I was, you know, from scratch trying to, to learn and, 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 you know, develop into, in this business. And, but I still felt like I didn't know that much, you know, um, of course, after We Will Rock You, that was definitely something that, that 
yeah, was sort sort of like a preparation for the whole audition and for Alphaba because you know you gotta have some stamina to do We Will Rock You. It's the same as Bad Out of Hell, actually. Yeah, it's it's a big thing. All the three parts, especially Scaramouche and Killer Queen, are just like whoa. So if you're able to do that, um, it's a good preparation for. Uh, and then also being able to play all those parts because Scaramouche and it's actually all of them are have some have sort of like elements of Alphaba in them or Alphaba has elements of them in, in her and um, they're strong but she's a fighter and she's still very young and, and, and she's also rebellious and then you know mm. she so it's um, it's really really a cool cool base for me to be able to to audition for for Alphaba yeah so so in the end from my research which may be wrong again but <laughs> but you've done over 2,000 performances yeah. of Alphaba yeah. over a seven-year period in four different countries, in three different languages, yeah. and you're the only person in the world to do so. I am, right? It's yeah. quite incredible. Yeah, that is. I mean, that's something that you should be unbelievably proud of. <laughs> I you am. Know, yes. That's really tricky. Yeah. What, Looking back at your time um, as, as the green um, goddess... <laughs> um, <laughs> What would be the, you know, everybody will ask you, oh, what's it like being covered in green makeup all the time? And is that annoying? Does it take time? All, all of that sort of stuff. And we all know it's a big thing. Um, so I'm not particularly interested in, in either of those two things because mm. I think uh, it's common knowledge already. Yeah. What I'd really like to know is you are, are so at home playing that character. Looking back on it now, let's say you had to jump in tomorrow you're in the west end you're, you're in london today which is where we're meeting you get that phone call saying oh my god all that alphabets have gone down we need you back tomorrow just for one performance please 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 and you go oh, okay fine um what will be the thing that you would be most nervous about or dreading or think oh god this is gonna be tough knowing the lyrics okay <laughs> yeah um Cool. What would I, I? You know, when when that happens, you don't even have time to be nervous. You just go on stage and you do it. I think um, that's what that those situations are like. But um, but what what did you find the hardest thing about playing that role for such a long time? Is it stamina? Or... It is definitely a stamina thing because. You know, I was used to playing eight shows a week. I had um, a strong voice. Um, you know, I knew what to do. I was very disciplined. It was all there. But then playing that part, being able to... I don't know. It's really... Um, that whole package of being able to, to, to play all those emotions be as authentic as possible and then having that voice every single day because it's not only the songs but it's also also how you use the voice in the in the scenes you know there's a lot of the time that she's fighting and she's she's doing a witch cackle and you know there's all there's all kinds of things happening where you have to have have this this strong voice and everyone in the audience is just waiting for that thing mm. that that voice you know um so i think the whole package to have that every single day even if you're maybe a little bit tired maybe you have a little cold in your throat um i don't know you're you're sad because something happened um that whole package has to be there, and everyone in the audience is not ex not wanting to see anything less than that. And that is um... so. It really is as hard as uh, as it's made out to be, because yeah. you know the, the the interesting thing, of course, is again if I walk down the road and went to somebody who doesn't work in musical theatre and said, "Can you think of a, a really difficult part to play?" Somebody's likely to turn around to me and say, "Well, Phantom." Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, the interesting thing about playing Phantom is you're actually only on stage for 20, 25 minutes of the, the whole show. And, and yeah. to my knowledge, actually, it's not, not a terribly, terribly difficult part to play um, compared to um, something like, I don't know, I mean, it's very different, but something like Strat from Bad Out of Hell, yeah. you know, yeah. vocally and stamina wise, um, just bouncing around the stage like a lunatic. 
uh, you know, it's really tr tough. And and so Alphaba really is as as difficult as as it sounds. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I think um, the way that I uh, got the taught the role, you know, the way that that I I can just hear the director saying like you know there's it has to come from from within and it's it's fighting and it's you know there's you're always fighting and not fighting as you know the actress who has to fight to to sing the note but it's it's the whole character is fighting the whole show mm. and that combined with all the songs and and all the scenes it's um yeah, I think it's it, it, there will never be a, another part for me at least. You know, that's it's the that, most challenging part that you've played I, to date. Um, to date, I think that is definitely the one. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, we've talked quite extensively about how you look after yourself and how you've managed to do to over two thousand performances. Which is, <laughs> oh, I tell you what, that there is one thing which we've not spoken about. Listeners, imagine this. Imagine going to work and over 2,000 days doing the exact same thing. Now, <laughs> the, you know, I, I do the same as you do. I conduct shows. Yeah. You are on the stage, I'm off the stage, but nevertheless, we do the same thing day in, day out. Now, yes, of course, there's differences because different people on stage bring different energies mm. different things can go wrong um, you're meeting different people backstage all the time so it's not yeah. Groundhog Day mm. but there is definitely an element of once you've done it 200 times you've done it and then once you've done it a thousand times you go okay I've done it a lot now yeah. and then when you've done it over 2,000 times you go blimey okay this is crazy how and, and, and this is the biggest issue I personally have with musical theatre is keeping um, interest and energy and keeping myself alive and not going on to what I would call autopilot which yeah. is where I know something so well that I can, can just conduct it without and putting my body and soul right. into it yeah. and that's the yeah. hardest thing for me yeah. really yes. well I mean um, I must say though 2,000 times in 4 different countries so that is something else because you know I started in Germany and then I moved to Holland, and then they invited me to Broadway, and then they, um, um, you know, offered me the job in, in the West End. So that definitely brought its own challenges. It was a different language, um, different atmosphere, you know, that, so that, that is definitely one of the reasons that made me just, you know, be interested in, and, so that's that. That's one of them. But then still, it's a lot because in in Germany, um, I I think I did the show almost three years, yeah. and that is uh, that is definitely a lot. Um, how? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I just um, and maybe that is really weird, but I just loved telling the story over and over again. And um, of course, you know what I said in the beginning, like I felt, I feel so at home on stage and I feel that I can definitely, I feel complete when I'm on stage, you know, and I'm, I feel uh, in control and, um, and then, and then, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just love to, to entertain people and let people be in a different world for for like at least two hours um and then yes well it's true though because on stage i love it when when we have one experience of a show and then the next show you find nuances differences there are so many i mean yeah. yeah, there's an unlimited amount of variables. It is actually, uh, even though people you know, people will not me immediately see yeah. that or something. You know, yeah. um, with with Bad Out of Hell, you know, together with my counterpart um, Alex, it was 
always just a tiny little bit different and we were we kept it alive and then you know i was like oh let's do something tomorrow well, let's let's try what let's see what happens mm. and that is um yeah i don't know also you know alphaba in wicked is such a rewarding part you know it's it's you, you get on that stage, you tell the story, you move people, and then afterwards you get so much back because everyone is overwhelmed and everyone is so thankful for that, you know, they experienced that in that evening. And then, you know, if, if one or two persons just say that to you in, at stage door, mm. you're like, ooh, let's do that again tomorrow. Yeah, sure. That's how it works for me at yeah. least. Yeah. yeah, well, I don't think the number of people is inspired to... to take part in musical theatre I mean it's fantastic yeah um, so you came to London and played it I mean you played it on Broadway which is incredible you played it in London in the West End which is also incredible yeah um, but then you had an issue I had an that. issue yeah that was very sad I had to leave um, um, the, yeah in 2014 I had to leave early because I had a big um, back problem and that I couldn't deal with that uh, without an operation. So I had to uh, have back surgery and that I couldn't wait, unfortunately, uh, which was very sad because, yeah, I mean, I was in the biggest show, in the biggest role, um, you know, oh, I was so proud to be there and and all of a sudden you had to say, sorry guys, um, you know, I felt I disappointed everyone and um that was hard but um yeah you know sometimes life um just decides for you yeah. and then you have to deal with it after that i must say um you know the things that i i now dare to do with my 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 body and and you know i was always a little bit um, yeah, trying to control everything because I was scared that, you know, because if when you feel pain all the time in your back, uh, you know, you feel it everywhere. You know, mm -hmm. if, if people who have back pains, you know, they know a little bit what I'm talking about. It's you feel it in your arm and you feel it in your toe. And, uh, and after that, um, I have really had to learn to, to say, oh, but I, I don't have to be afraid anymore and I can just do anything. And then I got the job at, um, in Tarzan playing Kala, <laughs> which is all about just body, you yeah. know, how to move and, and, you know, it's such a flexible thing. And, um, the minute I... Was that in Oberhausen? That you did was that? in no, Stuttgart. The minute I, I, you know, I worked with, uh, with, um, um, like a sports trainer and, um, and, and... Yeah, after a while, something clicked, and I just wasn't afraid anymore. So that was so amazing. And so, now I can just, you know, roll over cars and... and yeah, well, yeah, I mean, what, you, what are you doing bad out of hell? It's <laughs> incredible. So, uh, yeah. and your back is absolutely fine. My back is it's fine now, yeah. Great. Yeah, so it, it was uh, definitely something that was very sad, and I, at that time, gosh, I felt so that I... I disappointed everyone, you know, that's mm. so stupid, of course, because, you know, you don't, you don't choose to do that or, mm. but, um, that is, that is something that, that I had to, um, yeah, to really like deal with. Mm. Must've been quite scary at the time. It was. And, um, but having said that also my savior was being on stage yeah. because it was something that. You know, even though I felt it all the time, it, it, I felt strong and I was in control and I still, you know, the adrenaline and, and I could t still tell the story and people were still happy because they didn't, they didn't notice. So that helped me cope with it. There's definitely an interesting thing about us performers. And although I don't, I don't act on, on a stage, nevertheless, if I'm conducting or playing something, I, I still go into a, sort of a hypnotic zone where you, it's almost like you it's very difficult to describe it's almost like you don't exist it's almost mm. like it's not happening in real time for me anyway um, but there's definitely an interesting psychological evaluation to be made somewhere about escapism from real life yeah and um, the fact that we are able and paid to do that <laughs> to do that it's, it's, quite, it's really cool isn't yeah, it yeah <laughs> it is it's fantastic um, in 20 years time 
Yeah. So 2040, let's say. What do you think the state of the business will be like? What do, what do you think will be happening in musical theatre, in theatre in general? Ooh, um, well, I don't... I, I don't... I hope it is um, the way it is now or even um, the way it was 20 years ago or even, you know, because um, I... There's so much going on and, you know, all technology is going on and there's so much happening. It's so fantastic, you know, there's so many possibilities and that's, that is so cool. And, you know, um, there was a performance in, in a big arena once where, um, what I did, um, a few weeks back and then, and then, you know, there were all kinds of possibilities with 3D technology and, you know, it's it's really really great, and, and that can all be used now in theater, and it's getting better and better, and and so that's that is really cool. Um, I'm I'm hoping that musical theater will still be a live performance um, art. That um, you know, there's everything that you see and hear on stage is live, and that is something that um, that you know. I'm not sure if that is still the case in, in 20 years' time. What do you think? <laughs> oh, that's really rare that somebody turns the table on that question for me. We're on the edge, and I think it's still possible to claw it back and use new technology. I think, you know, the idea of 3D technology and, and holograms, you know, they're, yeah. they've they've got Marie, Marie Callis um, on a hologram touring around at the moment. Oh, my I mean, gosh. It's, it's, wow. Yeah. I mean that, yeah. As I said, I mean that is so awesome, and that's it's so great that so many wonderful things can happen. But um, I, I love being in a theater where there's big orchestra and where you know that that you feel that that it's all you know being played at that moment. Yes. And it's it's um, yeah. I, I hope we will have that. In but your job is safe because I, you know we can never ever find an alternative to a human being on stage acting and singing life. I'm pretty well, sure Well, you never that. know. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Um, what have you got next? What are you, what are you doing next? Um, well, um, uh, this is unique, but I have three upcoming projects in Holland, actually. Aha, uh -huh, back at which home. Which actually never happens. Um, yeah, so I'm back at home. I'm doing a... Um, I'm doing a tour, Best of Broadway, it's called. It's like a Best of Musicals tour, uh, which is um, in Holland. And then I have Aida in concert, so a concert version of, I, uh, you know... Um, That's the Elton John Elton school. Elton John, Gnau. Yeah, Gnau. Yeah, Gnau. Yeah. There you go. Dings bumps. Yes. And, <laughs> <laughs> Dings bumps. And, um, and then I have a little short uh, run of uh, Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, which I also played in London, the West End. Right. I played Paulina there, the lawyer, but now I play Peppa. And it's only 10 performances in Amsterdam. And that's all in the period May until uh, end of July. Okay, fantastic. And your website? My website is dillemainverkijk.nl. So, and what about social media? Do you do, you do social, don't you? I have uh, I have a Twitter account. I have an Instagram account. I'm very, I'm, you know... I'm and what are you in so all of those? Good. How do we find you? Um, it's wverkijk. And either it's for Twitter, it's just W for Kike, or it's W for Kike official on Instagram. Okay, fantastic. Come and look me up. Oh, I'm sure the audience will. Now, <laughs> last question before you go. Yeah. You've done a huge amount in your life and your career so far. Yeah. And I dare say that you're going to continue um, on that course and uh, conquer the world knowing you because your work ethic is just astonishing and I think I, I do want to say that from my side working with you I think the biggest thing that you bought uh, aside from your talent on, on stage you know that's, that's given but the biggest thing that you bought to the project that we work together on is a real sense of stability a sense of calm and a sense of professionalism which filtered from the top all the way down to to you know other other actors members of the ensemble and actually when you've got a lot of young kids i say young kids they're not kids you know 18 yeah, yeah. 19 20 20 
24 youngsters yeah. um, <laughs> on stage you know sometimes in a in a wild show they can get a bit wild as well and it's difficult to necessarily keep keep concentration keep the energy in the right place and save it for the stage and and your sense of calm and professionalism really does filter down to the rest of the company and that's a real gift and a real talent cool. and, I, and I hope you continue doing that thanks um what is there still left to conquer? What is there still left to achieve? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I still, that it's, it's a weird kind of thing, but um, when I was young, I dreamed of, um, of filling a big arena um, and being a pop, I, pop idol or pop singer and that, you know, the whole arena just came to see me. And of course, that's never going to happen if I don't even make my own album. So um, I first need to make my own album, and then maybe I can fill an arena in twenty years' time. <laughs> well, it's never too late. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, I, I just wonder, going back to when you got your first job in musical theatre in Elizabeth, whether you thought, do you know what, one day I'm going to do like the biggest part musical theatre. No, you know, you, and you so, know what? It's actually never something that course you see that oh that would be great but because I get got into that field in, in the musical theater field being so you know I, I didn't know anything so I didn't expect anything as well you know I just went in there and thought okay let's see if this is something for me let's see if I can and then I noticed oh hey I can develop I can you know um go from from a little a little tiny role to a little bigger role then I maybe can be an understudy and you know so it's never something that I I yeah I always dreamt of being a pop singer in a big arena and uh, but you're a smart cookie now and you've got experience and yeah. you know people and if that's really what you want to do I dare say one day you one will day. achieve that yeah I yeah. don't doubt it in the slightest no thanks <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. My You're thank very you. welcome. Bless you. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, it's me again. See, I told you that was a good one. Um, what a, an interesting lady. So thanks to Villamine uh, for spending time in London with me. And uh, it was really, really interesting to hear all about her life and what she feels, being as though she's at the top of her game, about working in musical theatre. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there'll be more to come, of course, in a couple of weeks' time, but for now, that's me done and dusted. Once again, thanks to my supporters, Lat56. Um, they are great pieces of luggage that I really do tour the world with, and it really does make my life an awful lot easier. If you'd like to see their range, it's www.lat56.com. But for now, from me, goodbye. <laughs>